for Chrysler for 40 years. Probably the most important job I had as far as Chrysler is concerned, I was director of product planning from 1975, excuse me, 1968 to 1975. Seven years. What I learned from that is that seven years is longer than anybody should be in the same job because after I was in the job five years, they already knew what I was going to propose and they'd already dismissed it. In other words, in their mind, they, in their mind when we sat in my native Fresno State Corporate Product Planning Committee in about 1972 or 73, they were thinking, well, here's Bert Bocab, he's going to propose another small car. You know, that's in the back of their mind. And that is what I was going to do. <laughs> because I did present a lot of small cars that didn't get approved. Anyway, um, that's longer. I didn't bring anything new to the job after, I would say, four years. So my recommendation to people that I, they work for me and people that I work with. If you haven't moved in four years, do something to stimulate some movement because you're probably not going to create, you're not going to do anything new for that job. So you ought to move on and bring something new to another job. Does that, does that and, you, John? Huh? John still works for cars, so I wondered if he was ready to move. <laughs> ready to move <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me guess that the, that the bean counters were probably happy to have you move on too, because you'd probably well, figured out ways around them, and I if they get a new guy they can push around, they're better off. One of the problems while I was there, Chrysler did not articulate a product strategy. They should have. Without articulating it, we all knew what the product strategy was. It was to get 15% of the market that was established by Ford and GM. And that is no way to grow and probably is no way to succeed. It's just kind of going along with it. And we didn't really have the resources, financial or technical resources, to do everything that GM and Ford did. So, we probably should have been off on our own, doing our own thing, long before we got in such severe trouble and Lee Iacocca rescued us and took us really in, a, in our own direction. Put a little Sorry. clear picture on that. We proposed a minivan in 1971. We, it was not approved. The idea was, what would a van look, look like if it was designed onto itself? Not a derivative of a truck, not a derivative of a passenger car, which a station wagon was, but what if, what if a van was a van in, for people, carrying people? So, we created the minivan in our advanced engineering and our advanced styling departments and we couldn't sell it to management. And we didn't get rid of it because we were sold on it, so the next year we'd sell it again and it didn't get bought. And finally they said don't show it to us again <laughs> because they had decided that if, if, if there was a market there, Ford and GM would have it. The fact that Ford GM didn't have it must not be a market, therefore we're not going to prove yours. And frankly, it did cost a lot of money, over a hundred million dollars in special tools. When, and we never got rid of it. It was always in our advanced styling and advanced engineering department. We weren't always actively working on it, but it was there. We couldn't throw it away. When Hal Sperlick came over from Ford, he came over a year ahead of Lee, when Henry Ford fired Hal, and then a year later he fired Lee, Hal came over and they made him president. We had actually had two presidents for a while, but they had to give him a good job. Hal was sold on the concept. And I've heard 
since then that Ford had been working on the same idea, but we were much further along. A year later, Lee came along, and Hal probably was working on Lee, and Lee looked at it, and in worse financial shape than Ricardo or Townsend was in, Lee looked at it and said, I like it, let's do it. So here we are, the guy that was willing to roll the dice, and we did it, and it was successful. But it kicked around for probably four or five years before it finally got the management that had the vision to agree with the guys that created it to say, let's do it. So, as I look back at the years that I was there, um, I'm reminded of a, of a slogan that I got out of a book written by Richard Nixon. And I never, I, if I had known this at the time, I'd have put it up in my office. But it said, managers do things right. Great. That's what I was, a manager, and I tried to do things right. But then the second sentence was more significant. Leaders do the right things. And you know that is so important because doing the right, doing things right, like Ford and like GM, wasn't nearly as important as doing the right thing, which was finding your own way, place in the market. So I always convince or try to sell that idea to people. The last thought I had before I open up your questions is, but the body is 91 years old. The mind, my mind is probably 40 years old. I mean, I really haven't lost anything there, and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed by having that still with me. But my hearing's 120 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, forgive me if I didn't understand you or ask you to repeat or so on. Because I feel like it's impolite, but nonetheless, I, I really don't understand you. So. Uh, with that, oh, I just add one other thing. Uh, two years ago, I went to see my doctor, Dr. Riley. He said, how you doing? I said, lousy. Oh, God, he said, what's wrong? I said, Doc, I feel like I'm 90 years old. He said, what's wrong with that? I said, I'm only 88. <laughs> anyway, now I feel 91 years old. The mind is still there. So. If I can answer your questions, I'll be glad to. Um, let me start out by asking, uh, I'm going to ask two questions. One of them I think is a really simple one for you to answer. I'm curious, how in the world, that with, with the thousands of people who are working on these projects that are not going to reach the market for two or three years, how do they keep their secrets so well? And then my second question is, is uh, Marcioni, what you, what you thought of him uh, uh, as, a, as a leader and, uh, and what his loss is to the, to the company. Repeat the first question. The first one was, how do, you, how do the car companies, with all the thousands of people who are working two, three years ahead of what's going to be hitting the dealer showroom, how do they keep their secrets so well? well you don't know like three months ahead of time when they're going to come out with some new model. I touched on that earlier today and, uh, with somebody, and I'll, I'll repeat it. I was director of product planning, and I sold the new Challenger F-Body Challenger and Barracuda for 1970. I said to the management, this market is going to go to a million and a half units in 1970. We will sell 15% of that market, which is 15% of a million and a half. There's 225,000 units. That's what we'll do. And that $225,000, it makes money. The manufacturing people said, hey, we love it, because 200,000 is two shifts of 60 cars an hour. 480 on the first shift, 480 on the second shift. 980, say a thousand cars a day, 
200 working days in a year, 200,000 cars, perfect plant loading. So manufacturing bought it, finance bought it, everybody bought it. The projection was wrong. This, the subs, we call it specialty car market. That was Mustang, Camaro, Firebird, Cougar, and there's a Mustang, and I forgot the American Motors had one too. Yeah, okay. Anyway, never hit a million units. Chrysler Corporation with a brand new F body, with all the sporty proportions and all the things that go with making it a specialty car, never hit a hundred thousand. The management every time they passed me in the in the hallway frowned when they looked at me. I wasn't sure whether I should go back to my office or go home. I mean, they were really unhappy, but it was a loser. As, as interesting as that car is and today to the young people, man, at the time it was a loser. That's why it is. No. Now, so now I want to back up to that. The problem was, two problems. One is projections don't go on up forever. We should have been a little wiser than that. Secondly, I learned in Europe the way to do cars, and I learned it from Peugeot because they became rather closely affiliated and bought Chrysler's European interests. They had a team of engineers and product planners and styling for each one of their platforms. And they worked on it and they built a prototype. They went right through metal, a metal prototype that could be evaluated by the engineers. And then the management decided what car to do. Now we've reduced lead time to two years from four years. So you're going to make a lot smarter decisions. But but the Chrysler Corporation couldn't accept, I'm not sure whether GM or Ford does this today, but Chrysler Corporation couldn't accept is to know that you were going to have three or four platforms where you were going to throw the work away. Because if they didn't buy that platform, then those guys would do another one, you know, because they're another few years out. So, and if they don't get selected, then we're going to do that platform where that work's all going to be thrown away. I think, in, sh in, in cutting the lead time in two, from four years to two years, I think you're way ahead financially to do it that way and come up with better product in the end than the way that we're doing it where we're saying we're going to do a new car four years from today. So anyway, let, let's go to your question. Well, well my question was, all right, so you've got all this lead time on all this stuff that you're working on. I mean, how does the, how come is it the general public just never finds out what's going on in the and the bowels of, of the Detroit uh, think tanks and everything else. I mean, it's like, oh, we don't find out about it until a month before the thing hits the showroom or something like that. But they're darn good at keeping secrets. And is, is there, is, is there, uh, uh, it, you know, is it is it part of the rules of working in the auto companies that you got to keep from blabbing at the bar or whatever? Is that a question? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, my, my question is, is are, are there, you know, are there, are there codes of conduct when you're employed by an auto company that you can't go and tell your buddy who doesn't work, who doesn't need to know, you're not well, allowed to tell them what's going on? Not and, disclosure. Well, of course, yeah. people move back and forth, and so ideas and information goes with them. Uh, you can't stop that. I can answer you on the demon. The way the way that you usually do that, and John probably knows this better than I do, when somebody in a rather sensitive position says he's going to leave, or if the management decides he's going to leave, you get him out of there right then. 
before they can start figuring out what they're going to take with them. So you, you generally put a guy, a security man with them, let them clean out his desk and escort them to the gate. Well, I know, for example, I, I bought a brand new 67 Barracuda. And I thought the thing was going to look pretty similar to probably a Mustang, maybe mixed in with a Camaro or something like that. And until that thing rolled off the truck, I had no idea what I had already agreed to buy. And, and I was just surprised. I was disappointed, Frank. I did not like the looks of the 67 Barracuda. But I had no way of knowing. I, I asked the dealer, I said, what can you show me in the way of advanced information? What is this car going to look like that I just agreed well, to buy? Well, should, he should have done that. Did you get a notch back or a fastback? Uh, the notch. That's why. That's expression. The fastback proportions and everything. Was it, was it so green? Right. Uh, <laughs> 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 You know, I know what you're talking about because, you know, when Dodge brought out that new truck in 94, yeah. there was all this buzz about this truck. And I think, I don't know if we had a meet down there or if I was down there with Ken Mack, but we were walking through the building and they were actually building these trucks in the basement at the tech center. Yeah. But nobody would say anything about what it looked like. Yeah. And, and until it popped on the market. Yeah. And, geez, I mean, even the magazines didn't seem to have any right. photos taken from 100 yards away. Right. Yeah. So somebody is enforcing something. Well, somehow. I worked right. outside of the plant, but I'm like John, I wasn't assigned to CTC, but I was up there a lot to the training lab and other. There were a lot of areas that changed when they went from Highland Park out to CTC. At Highland Park, They'd have stuff, stuff in the corner somewhere, but you could see it. But when you finally got up to CTC, and John will verify this, most project stuff like that is in an area that's secured, and unless you've got clearance, you don't get in there. Unless you see some red demon engine blocks in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. And we were looking at these, and, and I went up to the platform manager who ran that, and I said, what are these red blocks? Are those the demon blocks? Yeah. And he looked at me and he says, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I said, well, you're in charge of this. Yeah. What's the scoop? And he said, he says, John, this is like working for the FBI. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't say anything. <laughs> if I do, I got to kill you. And there were two guys with the horsepower. Yeah. And they knew who those two guys were. And so they ran teasers on the internet. Yeah. And they never told the horsepower till finally when they introduced yeah, it to New York. We release one more fact. Yeah, you get a little I was on it every week. <laughs> <laughs> what you said about the truck is interesting because I was looking at a new truck and you know there's no turbo to a truck? Yeah. How about that? See how many people have on that? They no what? No, I frame. There's no two doors. No two door. No rain. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> right. Really? The reaction. Yeah. That's my reaction. Yeah, really. I would have said, I'm not buying a four door truck. Well, that's what everyone wants. Exactly this point. <laughs> the first time they took those BR trucks in '94 out, they were at their Sterling Heights Vehicle Test Center, and they went on a lap of America. It was the first time they were really out to the public to see. And going out of '75 on 275, headed south. I don't know how many wrecks we almost caused because people like that. <laughs> <laughs> I first saw them on 94 on Bayern Harbor, one of them. Yeah. Out the Chelsea. Yeah. 